our life now. Good evening everyone. I hope you're all doing well and that you spent a wonderful day going inwards instead of going outwards. My name is Saman Gerard and welcome to another session of Readings in Isolation. What happened in the last episode is that um, we have a merchant whose life needs to be saved and we have three sheikhs and they are actually bargaining with the jinn. Um, the first is the master of the gazelles and the second one is uh, the master of the greyhounds. Hi. And oh my yeah, god, Jesus. Wait, sorry we had an audio issue here, apologies. Um, so the sheikh of the gazelles and the sheikh of the greyhounds and what they did is they told each of them, the jinn, the marvelous stories. And they were indeed so marvelous that the jinn granted each of them a third of the blood of the merchant. So we are left with another third and the last remaining third of the blood of the merchant. And this is where, go where I'm going to continue. Well, all right. Let's see if I can read this. It's a bit dark. There you go. I just have to get comfortable a bit. <clears throat> the third sheikh's story. Know, O Sultan and head of the jinn, that this mule was my wife. Now it so happened that I went forth and was absent one whole year. And when I returned from my journey, I came to her by night and saw a black slave lying with her on the carpet bed. And they were talking and dallying and laughing and kissing and playing the clothes buttock game. When she saw me, she rose and came hurriedly at me with a goglet of water and muttering spells over with, she besprinkled me and said, Come forth, from this thy shape into the shape of a dog. And I became on the instant a dog. She drove me out of the house, and I ran through the doorway, nor ceased running until I came to a butcher's stall, where I stopped and began to eat what bones were there. When the stall owner saw me, he took me and led me into his house. But as soon as his daughter had sight of me, she veiled her face from me, crying out, Do you bring man to me? Into my presence? Her father asked, Where's the man? And she answered, This dog is a man whom his wife has bewitched and I am able to release him. When her father heard her words, he said, Allah upon thee, O my daughter, release him. So she took a goglet of water and after uttering words over it, sprinkled upon me a few drops, saying, Come forth from that form into thy former form. And I, returned to my natural shape. Then I kissed her hand and said, I wish thou wouldest transform my wife even as she transformed me. Thereupon she gave me some water saying, as soon as you see her asleep, sprinkle this liquid upon her and speak what words you heard me utter so shall she become whatsoever you desire. So I went to my wife and found her fast asleep. And while sprinkling the water upon her, I said, come forth from that form into the form of a mule. So she became on the instant a she mule. And she it is whom you see with thine eyes, O Sultan and head of the kings of the jinn. 
Then the jinn turned towards her and said, Is this so? And she nodded her head and replied by signs. Indeed, this the truth. For such is my tale, and this is what has befallen me. Now when the old man had ceased speaking, the jinni shook with pleasure and gave him the remaining third of the merchant's blood. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. Then Dunyazad said, O oh, my sister, how pleasant is thy tale, and how tasteful, how sweet and how grateful. She replied, And what is this compared with, that I could tell thee the night to come, if I live and the king spare me? Then thought the king, By Allah, I will not slay her until I hear the rest of her tale, for truly it is wondrous. So they rested that night in mutual embrace until the dawn. After this, the king went forth to his hall of estate, and the vizier and the troops came in, and the court was crowded, and the king gave orders and judged, and appointed and deposed, bidding and forbidding during the rest of the day. Then the divan broke up, and King Shahriar entered his palace. Now when it was the third night, and the king had had his will on the wazir's daughter, Dunyazad, her sister, said to her, Finish for us that tale of thine. And she replied, with joy and goodly grief. It has reached me, auspicious king, that when the third old man told a tale to the jinni more wondrous than the two preceding, the jinni marveled with exceeding marvel, and shaking with delight cried, Lo, I have given thee the remainder of the merchant's punishment. And for thy sake have I released him. Thereupon the merchant embraced the old man and thanked them. And these sheikhs wished him joy on being safe and went forth each one for his own city. Yet this tale is not more wondrous than the fisherman's story, asked the king. What is the fisherman's story? And she answered by relating the tale of the fisherman and the jinni. It has reached me, O auspicious king, that there was a fisherman, well stricken in years, who had a wife and three children, and withal was of poor condition. Now it was his custom to cast his net every day four times, and no more. One day he went forth about noontide to the seashore, where he laid down his basket, and tucking up his shirt and plunging into the water, made a cast with his net and waited till it settled to the bottom. Then he gathered the cords together and hailed away at it, but found it weighty, and however much he drew, it landwards. He could not pull it up. So he carried the ends ashore and drove a stake into the ground and made the net fast to it. Then he stripped and dived into the water all about the net and left not off working hard until he had brought it up. Dressing his, himself again in high good humor, he went to the net when he found in it a dead jackass which had torn the meshes. Now for those who don't know, a jackass is a male donkey. Now when he saw it, he exclaimed in his grief, Be it as Allah wills, the glorious, the great. Then added, This is a strange manner of daily bread. And he began reciting, 
this verse. O toiler through the glooms of night, in peril and in pain, thy toiling stint for daily bread comes not by might and main. Seest thou that not the fishes seek afloat upon the sea, his bread while glimmer stars of night as set in tangled skein. Anon he plunges in despite the buffet of the waves, the while to sight the bellying net his eager glances strain. Till joying at the night's success, a fish he bringeth home, whose gullet by the hook of fate was caught and cut in twain. When buys that fish of him a man who spent the hours of night, reckless of cold and wet, and gloom in ease and comfort fain. Lord to the Lord who gives to this, to that denies his wishes, and dooms one toil and catch the prey, and others eat the fishes. Then he added, up into it, I am sure of his beneficence, inshallah. So he continued. When thou art seized of evil fate, assume the noble soul's long suffering, tis thy best. Complain not to the creature, this be plain, from one most ruthful to the ruthlessest. The fisherman, when he had looked at the dead ass, ass is the donkey, got it free of the toys and wrung out and spread his net. For the second time, only two more left. Then he plunged into the sea, saying, in Allah's name, and made a cast and pulled at it. But it grew heavy and settled down more firmly than the first time. Now he thought that there were fish in it, and he made it fast, and doffing his clothes went into the water and dived and hailed until he drew it up upon dry land. Then found he in it a large earthen pitcher, which was full of sand and mud. And seeing this, he was greatly troubled and began repeating these verses. Forbear, O troubles of the world, and pardon, and ye nil forbear. I went to seek my daily bread. I find that breadless I must fare. For neither handcraft brings me aught, nor fate allots to me a share. How many fools the players reach, while darkness whelms the wise and where. So he prayed pardon of Allah, and throwing away the jar, wrung his net and cleansed it and returned to the sea the third time to cast his net and weighed it till it had sunk. Then he pulled at it and found therein potsherds and broken glass, whereupon he began to speak these verses. He is to thee that daily bread, thou canst nor lose nor bind, nor pen nor writ away these are thy daily bread to find. For joy and daily bread are what fate deigneth to allow. This soil is sad and sterile ground, while that makes glad the hind. The shafts of time and life bear down full many a man of worth, while bearing up to high degree whites of ignoble mind. So come though death, for verily life is not worth a straw. When low the falcon falls with all, the mallet wings the wind. No wonder this thou seest, how the great of soul and mind are poor and many a lozzle car to height of luck designed. This spur shall overfly the world from east to furthest west, and that shall win her every wish, though never she leave the nest. Then raising his eyes heavenwards, he said, O oh my God, verily thou knowest that I cast not my net each day, but four times, 
The third is done, and as yet thou hast vouchsafed me nothing. So this time, O oh my God, deign give me my daily bread. Then, having called on Allah's name, he again threw his net and waited it sinking and settling. Whereupon he hailed at it, but could not draw it in, for that it was entangled at the bottom. He cried out in vexation, There is no majesty and there is no might save in Allah. Thereupon he stripped his clothes and, diving down to the net, busied himself with it till it came to land. Then he opened the meshes and found therein a cucumber-shaped jar of yellow copper, evidently full of something. Its mouth stopped with lead and stamped with the seal of our Lord Suleiman son of David. Seeing this, the fisherman rejoiced and said, If I sell it in the brass bazaar, it's worth ten golden dinars. He shook it, and finding it heavy, continued, Would to heaven I knew what is herein, but I must and will open it, and look to its contents, and store it in my bag, and sell it in the brass market. And taking out a knife, he worked at the lead till he had loosened it from the jar. Then he laid the cup on the ground and shook the vase to pour out whatever might be inside. He found nothing in it. But presently there came forth from the jar a smoke, which spired heavenwards into the ether, and which trailed along earth's surface till presently having reached its full height. The thick vapour condensed and became an ifrit, huge of bulk, whose crest touched the clouds while his feet were on the ground. His head was as a dome, his hands like pitchforks, his legs long as masts, and his mouth big as a cave. His teeth were like large stones, his nostrils like jars, his eyes two lamps, and his look was fierce and lowering. Now when the poor fisherman saw the Ifrit, his side muscle quivered, his teeth chattered, his spittle dried up, and he became blind about what to do. Upon this, the Afrit looked at him and cried, There is no God but the God, and Suleiman is the prophet of God. The fisherman then said, there is thou a blasphemous giant to call Suleiman a prophet, apostle of Allah. The jinn replied, Slay me not, never again, will I grain say thee in word, nor sin against thee indeed. The fisherman said, Suleiman is dead some thousand and eight hundred years ago, and we are now in the last days of the world. What is thy story, and what is thy account of thyself? And what is the cause of thy entering into this jar? Now when the evil spirit heard the words of the fisherman, he said, There is no God but the God. Be of good cheer, fisherman, the fisherman said. Why biddest thou me to be of good cheer? And he replied, because of thy having to die an ill death in this very hour. Said the fisherman, 
thou deservest for thy good tidings, the withdrawals of heaven's protection, O thou distant one. Wherefore should you kill me, and what thing have I done to deserve death? I who freed thee from the jar, and saved thee from the sea, and brought thee up on the dry land. The Ifrit replied, Ask of me only what mode of death thou wilt die, and by what manner of slaughter shall I slay thee? Rejoined the fisherman, What is my crime? And why such retribution? The Ifrit said, Hear my story, O fisherman. And he answered, Say on and be brief in thy saying, for of very sooth my life breath is in my nostrils. Thereupon the genie said, Know that I am one among the heretical jinn, and I sinned against Suleiman, son of David. I, together with the famous Sakhr al jinni whereupon the Prophet sent his minister, Asaf, son of Barkhia, to seize me. And this vizier brought me against my will and led me in bonds to him. And he placed me standing before him. When Suleiman saw me, he took refuge with Allah and bade me embrace the true faith and promise him obedience but I refused. So to resent for this, he imprisoned me within this jar and stopped it over with lead, whereon he impressed the most high name and gave his orders to the jinn who carried me off to cast me into the midmost of the ocean. There I abode hundred years during which I said in my heart, Whoso shall release me, him I will enrich for ever and ever. But the full century went by, and when no one set me free, I entered upon the second five score, saying, Whoso shall release me, for him I will open the hordes of the earth. Still, no one set me free, and thus four hundred years passed away. Then I said, Whoso shall release me, for him I will fulfill three wishes. Yet no one set me free. Thereupon I said to myself, Whoso shall release me from this time forth, him will I slay, and I will give him choice of what death he will die. And now, as thou hast released me, I give thee full choice of deaths. The fisherman, hearing the words of the Ifrit, said, O oh Allah, the wonder of it that I have not come to free thee, save in these days, adding, Spare my life, so Allah spare thine, and slay me, not let Allah said one to slay thee, replied the Ifrit. There is no help for it. Die thou must. So ask me, by way of boon, what manner of death thou wilt die. Halbait, thus certified the fisherman again, addressed the Ifrit, saying, Forgive me, this my death as a generous reward for having freed thee. And the Ifrit, surely I would not slay thee save on account of that same release. O chief of the Ifrit, said the fisherman, I do thee good, and thou requires me with evil. Now when the Ifrit heard these words, he answered, No more of this talk. Needs must I kill thee. Upon this, the fisherman said to himself, This is a jinni, and I am a man to whom Allah has given cunning wit. 
So I will now cast about to compass his destruction by mine intelligence. He began by asking the Efrit, Hast thou indeed resolved to kill me, and receiving for all answer? Even so, he cried. Now in the most great name, engraved on the seal ring of Suleiman, the son of David, and I question thee on a certain matter, will thou give me a true answer? The Efrit replied, yes. But hearing mention of the most great name, his wits were troubled and he said with trembling, ask and be brief. The fisherman said, how didst thou fit into this bottle, which would not hold thy hand, no, nor even thy foot? And how come it to be large enough to contain the whole of thee? Replied the Efrit. What? Dost not believe that I was all there? And the fisherman rejoined, Nay, I will never believe it until I see thee inside with my own eyes. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say, a permitted say. And this is exactly what I am perceiving the dawn of the day and I will seize my day for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed the story of tonight. Joanna is going to continue tomorrow night so please tune in, leave us some feedback, send us some hearts, send us some likes. We are in isolation after all. So I'm sending you plenty of hearts, much love, stay strong, stay grounded, and again, go inwards when you can't go outwards. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.